Hello, my name is Hannah Lynn Roth and you're tuning in to Arventura TV. With me today is my guest Dan Rogers, owner of the Bunker Indoor Golf Center. Hi Dan. How's it going Hannah? Good, thanks for joining me. Oh, Oop. thank you. <laughs> no problem. Um, so, I want to know, what do you love about golf? What I love about golf is it gives me the opportunity to get outside with my friends, uh, enjoy some fresh air, and just really enjoy the Southern California weather. Perfect reasoning. Good way to bring, you know, connect with your friends, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. Very cool. I'll get away from work. And you, would you say that would be a good reasoning for a newbie to get involved too? Yeah, to be honest, golf's a really cool sport because it can kind of cater to any skill level from the beginner all the way to the very advanced player. Um, it doesn't take much to get out onto a golf course. We have our basic equipment that we'll go over and really it's just a good time to get out with anyone to have some fun really is what it's about. So. Well that's cool, yeah, because for me I don't know anything about golf so it can kind of be a little intimidating. Okay. But to know that anyone, beginner, there's a place for you. Yeah, of course. Very cool. Yeah. And so what is the main objective of the game itself? Well, the simplest way to put it is to get the golf ball put into the hole with as few strokes as possible uh, in the least amount of time. Okay, and the strokes is just swinging and hitting the ball. Yep, every time you swing and actually hit the golf ball, you know, to, to advance it forward, that is considered a stroke. Okay, cool. Yep. And so, next we have the equipment. What kind of equipment yeah. would we need to get started playing? Well, for anyone that's starting to play golf, there's a few basic necessities that you need. One is a golf ball. Um, golf balls are, they range in different varies of uh, hard and softness and feels, okay. but uh, the basic golf ball is fine. Um, you have a tee, you put this tee into the ground and the golf ball on the tee to start the hole. And, okay. um, and so these are two of the basic necessities you need. Beyond that, there's the equipment. So with the equipment, we have your golf club called a driver. And with a driver, as you can see, it's a bigger golf head and it's yeah. a longer shaft. So that way you can hit the ball a lot further uh, down the middle of the fairway so you okay. use this to tee off. So this is the head right here, mm -hmm. and then this is what you would call the shaft, the actual stick that you hold on to. Correct. Okay, very good. Yeah. And um, is there a difference like with the flatness right here? Yeah, different drivers have different launch angles. So the launch angles uh, give you different heights in terms of your ball flight. And by launch angle, is that um, just when you hit it, like the way it shoots off? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. The, the degree that the ball takes off and gets up into the air for its flight. Exactly. Okay, very cool. The next piece of equipment that you know, a, a basic golfer needs to get started is irons. Um, these are irons. Uh, okay. They're basically designed with different lofts. They have all different ranges in uh, you know, the degrees of flatness and stuff for the... Okay, for and the what is a loft? A loft is a degree that the, actually the club hits the ground at. And so there's a 56 degree loft as an example as a sand wedge and that's to put the ball a lot higher. You know, then you have your three iron which is a lot, it's a lot flatter, a lot straighter, okay. so it's going to hit the ball a lot lower. So depending on your distance, each club mm -hmm. is kind of designed for each difference based on the loft. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then once you get onto the putting green, you got to put the ball in the golf hole. So we have our basic putter. Oh, this one's interesting looking. Yeah. It's very different. Yeah, it's got a flat, very, very flat face. And yeah. it's designed to hit the ball very smooth and go, you know, to go into the golf hole. Okay. So, yeah, this is your basic equipment. It's like hollow in here too. Does that make a difference compared to the other ones? Um, not necessarily. This is just the particular des uh, design of this putter. Um, there's other styles of putters where there's no hole, you know, and okay. it's not hollow. Um, it's just uh, more for aesthetic. Okay. So, um, again, let's recap. We have the driver, which was this one. Yep. And then what were the other two again? Uh, these are the irons. The iron? Yep, for okay. the middle, kind of approaching the green. Okay, uh, approaching the green. And then you the have uh, your putter, which is what you use once you get onto the green to put the ball into the hole. Okay, cool. Awesome, thank you. And so what are some of the proper rules and etiquette when you're out on the field? Yeah, well one thing that golf really is good about teaching is a lot of life rules and lessons. Um, so one thing that's really cool is it teaches you a lot about respect, integrity, sportsmanship, you know, so the matter of not talking while your opponent is uh, hitting their shot or walking around could be a good example of sportsmanship. You know, you have to keep your own score. So to actually count every single score and a, take a penalty when you need to, um, 
that's all on you. So it teaches you all about the integrity part of the game, which is really cool. And just to be respectful to everyone around you while you're playing the golf. So it's cool because it does teach you a lot about just life lessons and uh, different things like that. It's really well, neat. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it shows a sense of responsibility. Because exactly. Because for an outsider, maybe who doesn't really know anything about it, it doesn't have really a big interest in the beginning, they might see it as you know, just swinging a ball around in yeah, circles it's a or lot, something. Yeah, a lot more than that, you know, when you really get into the game. But for the, for the very, you know, basic beginner, that's a good way to start and just have fun. You know, just go out to a driving range, hit some golf balls, mm -hmm. and just really get used to hitting the ball and enjoying it from there and then taking it, you know. Yeah, finding what kind of fits right for you. And yeah, exactly. Practice to see how far you can swing it. Yeah, <laughs> the old Happy Gilmore swing. You know, right. It's pretty common. So. Yeah, oh, cool. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. Um, okay, so those are the etiquette, and yeah. so the rules. We, I know you kind of went over the the moral value mm -hmm. of it. Are there any particular rules um, that help? You know, that that's like core to the game itself. That se separates it from, or makes it related to um, other sports. Yeah, I guess off the top of my head, um, every player plays their own golf ball. So you don't go and you hit anyone else's golf ball. Okay. Um, there is an order in which you tee off. So it's called an honor system. So whoever got the best score on the previous hole always goes first. Okay. And then kind of that way, you know, and um, generally there's four people in a group, um, which is called a foursome. Um, and that's the max number of people that can go okay. out on a golf course. So you can have four or less people in a group. Correct. And the person who... Um, does the best or has the less strokes goes first? Correct. Whoever, okay. yeah, it's the same thing. If they do the best, they do the best because they had the Less least amount of strokes used okay. on that hole. So. Okay, so there's a little incentive there to do <laughs> to do well. Yeah, you want to you know be on top of the honor system. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's so, cool. And yeah. then with the balls too, you know, you have to keep track of which one's your ball. Exactly. Is there ways to tell or customize them or um, fun well, little things like that? Yeah, there's a lot of different brands of golf balls. So depending on who you're playing with, you know, you could identify it that way. Mm -hmm. um, a very common thing that happens too is people use like Sharpie pens and right. they'll like put their little mark on it, whether it's a dot next to the name or a line down the middle or so some a, kind of mark or whatever. It's a chance to show off your uh, artist. Artistic you know. ability. That is for <laughs> yeah. you to be surprised at some of the stuff that you can see on a golf ball that you find in the bushes. So. <laughs> in the bushes. Yeah, because yeah, I'm sure there's tons of them out on a golf field. Yeah. Which uh, will kind of lead me to my next question. Uh, explain to me the different types of fields or course, you know, courses there are. Cause, okay. Because uh, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, there's a few different types of golf courses. Um, the general, there's a general public golf course, which mm -hmm. is kind of uh, just open to the public. So anyone can go to it. It's fairly cheap. Er, you know, uh, there yeah. can be very expensive as well. Um, but it's just kind of open to the public. Um, another type of golf course is a country club. And that is where you need, you know, it's very expensive. You have to be a member, pay into it, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then there are indoor little places that you can go. Um, there is, you know, just the basic uh, miniature golf places you can go. Uh, but in terms of the basic styles of golf course, um, you know, kind of country club, and public, is kind of the general. And then <laughs> mini golf, but that's kind of like a... Yeah, and that's more of a recreation, kind of just a fun <laughs> thing, you know. So it's a good way to maybe get started in the game of golf is to go do some miniature golf and see how you like it and then kind of take it to the next step and Yeah, because it, it seemed from what you were explaining that it kind of goes in increments, like in a gradient kind of level. There's like, you yeah. know, beginner fun mini golf kind of thing with, you know, I'm sure they have like windmills and castles and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> they do. So kind of like a, a carnival for, for golf. Yeah, it's really fun. It just kind of provides a positive association with the game. Yeah. Which is, uh, especially for young kids, it's really important because mm -hmm. not too many kids these days are really getting into golf as much as they used to be. So by having that positive association with the game, it uh, kind of leads them to want to keep playing, which is nice. Yeah. And um, not just get some negative association and never want to do it again and especially, lost them for life. So. You know, especially like with the whole integrity and responsibility yeah. value part of it as well. You know, if you can kind of incorporate that with the fun you yeah. know, aspects of it. Then you know the transition from that to being outdoors with your friends at um, the public ones or an indoor one. And yeah. The indoor one. Tell me a little bit about that, because obviously if you're out in a the field, there's much more space. An indoor one that's a little bit right. different, I would think. Well, with an indoor facility, it's kind of neat. Depending on which type of indoor facility you're you're at or practicing in, um, it's really important because 
it takes away a lot of the visual. So being out on a driving range, as an example, you're hitting the golf ball and you're seeing the ball fly and everything, which is cool. It can also, for the, for the player that's really trying to improve his game, it's one more visual uh, thought not needed. Okay. Because as you're getting more serious and progressing into the game, you would go to an indoor facility more because of the technology that's offered at those facilities. Okay. Um, it's a little different than a normal driving range in the sense that there's virtual simulators. So it talks oh, to you about your, okay. your, uh, your spin rate, your total distance, oh, like wow. to a T, you know? So, so you really dial it in. And that's the difference, is all the technology. Using the right type of driving range mats, it's not your typical type of mat at a normal driving range. Um, it actually is a training aid to teach you proper ball striking, which is really cool. And then there's also the simulators, so you can play the virtual golf on there, which is really fun. So it's kind of like one of those video game types. Yeah, exactly. Things. And oh. so even more, that's a, another <laughs> positive association. Yeah. Um, so and then you know incorporating with golf fitness and proper instruction and video analysis, that's kind of the difference between an indoor golf center versus a typical driving range. Right. So you can get the whole lowdown at an indoor one. Yeah. Which is pretty, pretty well, cool. Well, you can actually, you know, it gives you an opportunity to trust the process, mm -hmm. you know, in progression of golf, um, especially depending on which level you're trying to get to. So you definitely want to, yeah, to trust the process mm -hmm. to achieve real results. It's kind That's of, what it's about, going out and applying and getting results. If you want yeah. to, especially, you know, I mean, pertaining to this, this game. Right, right. You know, um, then you'll go out there with the pros and be like, what's up? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that's, the, that's the goal. You know, cool. To get out there. And, and once again, as you're, you know, the whole goal of like an indoor facility, as an example, is to provide a more enjoyable experience for the golfer, especially if they're a beginner on the mm -hmm. golf course. Awesome. And do you have like a brief, quick, like memorable story that you'd like to tell? Um, I, I've played a long time, a lot of competition. I have some really good memories, like getting our team to go to CIF for high school golf and winning okay. some different tournaments. But one of my best memories, uh, just as like a child and playing golf, uh, was just every Sunday morning, I would go out with my dad. Him and I Aww. would go out and uh, you know, we'd go out early morning, play the back nine over at Olivas, and, uh, and then have breakfast. And that was kind of our little ritual. So that's that's, to me, it's very special. That's you know? perfect. I love yeah. that. Yeah, that needs to happen more often, Dave. Yeah, no, it, it totally. <laughs> it definitely does. All right, well, very so. good. And is there a way that the viewers can contact you for more information if, you know, you, you, you know a lot about it? So. Yeah, definitely. Well, for one, you can call me. Uh, my phone number uh, for my facility the, is 805-650-1534. Uh, and uh, then we're on Facebook as well okay. um, under the Bunker Door Golf. And... Uh, and that's the basic way to, to find us. Okay, and then uh, I know you, you'll have a, a website up in the future. Correct. So if you'd like to state that. Yeah, the website is uh, thebunkergolf.com. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Dan. I appreciate your time being here. Yeah. I, I loved it, and I have a little more understanding of uh, the game of golf <laughs> and the integrity of it all. Yeah, and definitely. I need a tan and go outdoors, so <laughs> yeah, I might we'll as well. go play some golf. Yeah, yeah, let's go play some golf. Totally, totally. Well, it was a pleasure, and thank you for having me. All right, awesome. All right. My name is Hannah Lynn Roth, and you're tuning in to Arventura TV. Thank you. Mm -hmm.